Hello again, welcome back everyone, Liquor Hound here with you, and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Barrel Craft Spirits Bourbon, batch number 33. Now, you know, it's been a while since I picked up one of these, uh, but again, retail pricing on them is about $80, so I kind of decided, you know what, let's see where they're at. Uh, of course, when you flip it around to the back, you can always read on all the bourbons, you can see where it was distilled. you got to be careful there because... Sometimes they'll try to just say it was bottled at, bottled at or produced at. That doesn't necessarily mean where it was distilled at. So you're always looking for distilled in Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee for this one. All right? Now, I will admit, when I see that, if it's Tennessee, I kind of get a little concerned. Okay? Because Tennessee uh, sourced whiskeys are typically Dickel. And while Dickel can be good. In my opinion, Dickel has a very uh, rambunctious uh, teenage year issue, okay? And what I mean by that is um, young Dickel at about five years old can be good. Not usually, but I would say can be good. In my opinion, this is all my opinion. Uh, it's just that I'm super sensitive to the high minerality that it gives you. A lot of people, you know, talk about Flintstones vitamins when you're talking about Dickel. And some, t some of the really young Dickel has a ton of it. Uh, the mid, again, somewhere between 5 and I would say 12-ish, definitely can still have a lot of it. When they start getting it into the 13, like the Bond and Bond 13 that first came out was pretty good. Man, I really liked it. The f some of the 15s were really good. And then you had that 17s that they were doing, um, again... There was other bottlers doing it, but uh, Blue Note was one of them. But they were really, really good. Not all, some. And so, when I see Dickel, I'm just always a little concerned, like, wow. As a, as a blender, I'm always thinking, you got to be real careful with it. So when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'll try it out. We'll see what it's about. All right. Retail pricing again, $80. Bottled at 116.6 proof, so they didn't cut that down. They did talk about how this was a combination of five, six, seven, and nine-year-old barrels. No eight-year-old for whatever reason. Uh, there was a combination of high rye bourbon, which I'm guessing is going to be the Indiana 36% rye, and high corn bourbon. Now, the high corn bourbon, uh, they said, was chosen because they were going after kind of like a butterscotchy, sweeter tone, and the high rye because they're looking for that kind of fruit and floral punch. All right? All right, but let's go ahead and get to the nosing and tasting, see what we think. Blow that out. Oh, nice. It's a nice nose. It's um, brown sugar and caramel. There's some spice, but it is 116, almost 117 proof. That's to be expected on the nose. It stays into the kind of like a apples, cherries, and they're a little bit like a natural cherry. It's not like, it's not leaning on like maraschino. It's just like a natural cherry juice element on the nose. A little bit of, there's a little plum in there. Definitely a good amount of citrus. Orange, a little bit of lemon. Some leather. I'm searching around the glass. You have to check different uh, heights around the glass and different edges. Change nostrils sometimes. You have a dominant and a nostril and the off nostril. Ooh, right there. There's almost like a little bit of a root beerish tone to it right there with that sweet vanilla oak almost like a almost like a little bit like a vanilla taffy all right let's taste it okay okay Ooh, nice medium just i'd say almost medium high viscosity it's pretty viscous Oh, yeah. Big brown sugar. 
little bit of caramel in there. Hits you early with the fruit. I would say it doesn't drink its proof. Uh, 116.6, I would guess probably if I was tasting this blind. 111, 111 right there, 110. But big brown sugar, you definitely get like a red apple uh, character in with this natural cherry that I picked up on the nose. Very, very subtle, like man, just one single little bana dried banana chip in there. That's typically, banana is typically a younger bourbon profile. But as long as it starts getting into that, it's very, again, background-ish, a little bit of a banana chip element, perfectly fine. That's a, almost reminds me of a banana split whiskey, which this is very much doing. Because you get that kind of, that cherry, that kind of nuttiness. This one has pecans, not, uh, pecans and peanut, actually. A little bit of like a peanut skin to it as well. cherries and there's also baked apples a little bit of plum yep yeah. there's a little orange what I would almost like if you were uh, skinning an orange right you get that big peel you get that essence a little bit of a lemon zest so just a couple little scrapes on that lemon in there Oof, big vanilla again I kind of I think on the nose I equated it to a vanilla like a taffy that definitely comes through on the palate yeah definitely mm -hmm. pretty creamy little bit again on the finish those those citrus elements are kind of still lingering you get a really nice dense rich oak does not feel young and the one thing you've probably noticed that I'm just noticing is the one thing I haven't mentioned was any kind of big minerality right that's not really in here. That's nice. They were really cognizant and that was really well blended because and I can remember and I, I don't know if I mentioned this but I can remember um, a barrel craft spirits five-year-old dickel they did probably about five years ago and I picked it up because it was fantastic. Man, it might have been longer than that. But anyway, I picked it up because it was fantastic and yeah, and I, I sometimes I just really love them when they're kind of like this without that super big minerality. And so this reminds me of that type of dickel where it's, it's you know, really fruity and sprightly, but it's, it's not going into the Flintstone vitamins like you'd expect. Hmm. And with that kind of pecan and the peanut skins on the back end, you start getting to like a cocoa leather territory not super new leather but also not really old I always kind of equate this to like a just a glove leather there is a little bit of like a to me a cracked white pepper tone into the spice component with the cinnamon there on that mid palate little bit of nutmeg Ooh, the cherry's really kind of peeking out too as you chew on that. Yeah, I would I would definitely call this one kind of a banana split bourbon. Okay, it's got all those kind of nuances that you really like—the creaminess and the little the nuts, the sprinkling of the nuts—and you get the cherry, and it kind of feels really round. And if you're into what we get now on current shelves, we get a lot of this kind of profile now. A lot of newer bourbons have this profile, very citrusy, very. Uh, brown sugar, caramel, really nice, rich and round. Yeah, yeah. Hats off to them. They did a really good blend on batch number uh, 33 from Barrel. Again, always make sure uh, to check the back of the bottle, and you can see where it was distilled at. Okay, don't go by if it says produced by or bottled at or bottled by. Don't go by that. You're always looking for where it was distilled. Because just because it was bottled there or produced there does not mean it was distilled there. But this one clearly states Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana. So, love transparency. I definitely do that. And I love to see it. So, 
Barrel Craft Spirits Batch 33. I think you should go out there and, and pick this bottle up if it's, I don't know, I still see it out there. Again, retail price $80, but this is 116.6 proof, so it's definitely worth it. I will say my bottle's been sitting open for a month, and because when I cracked it, you know, I liked where it was, but I wanted to make sure before I shot this video that it wasn't going to really change with air. So here we are a month into it, and no, it's rounded out, but it has not changed. It hasn't, you know, had that big minerality jump or anything like that. Yeah, this is really good bourbon. So again, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound if you're able. Over there, you're going to get these videos two weeks early. You're going to get a private review library. You get all the videos ad-free. Uh, a lot of other little perks, bonus videos, and insider tips, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you can't, and you're just watching this here on YouTube, greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.